Hey everyone, so in this video I'm going to tell you a bit about a uh, knee injury I've been uh, having for about two, two months. It feels like an overuse injury and I'm going to talk a bit about uh, what I did wrong and kind of a self reminder for myself of how I could avoid this situation. So I think the most cardinal error I would say I did was, um, as some of you know, I swapped my uh, frames and on the new frame frame I had, the Canfield, I didn't have a dropper post uh, when it arrived. And I had this uh, short regular post that I used. I was very eager to start riding it when it arrived. And uh, on my first ride, it worked well. Um, I rode 100% of the time out of the saddle. It was very tiring, but I didn't have any issues. And then in my other rides, uh, I joined a, a group I ride with and we did uh, longer distance distances. And at a certain point, I was so tired from riding out of the saddle that I started uh, spinning uh, while seated in a very low position where my knees were very uh, bent. Um, and I'm sure that, uh, that this was the main cause that triggered this whole event. O on top of that, when I swapped out the frames, I also changed to a higher ratio. So usually on the big L, I always ran a, a 30 tooth chain ring with a 20 tooth uh, rear cog. And when I swapped this frame, I also wanted uh, to go a bit faster, I guess. So I also went for a bit of a harder or higher gear ratio. Uh, so both of these things together were probably a bad idea. The, the second thing I, I think I did that was kind of uh, dumb, I, I changed my uh, running shoe. Uh, now I have nothing against uh, Colombia, they probably uh, make good shoes, but usually I always run, run with a uh, hookah une une, which if you don't know, they have very, very big uh, cushioning uh, on the heel on the um, sole. And they also come with a relatively low drop. I think it's five millimeters. That's the distance between the heel and the toes. And on these shoes, it's a more classical, I think nine or 10 millimeter drop. So the kind of shoes, while not being better or worse, one of them was simply a t kind of shoe that I'm more regular to running with. And on top of swapping the cho shoes, I also increased my running distance. So. Usually I run uh, regularly about two, three times a week, something like between two and three kilometers. That's what works well for me. And um, in this specific period of time, two months ago, I decided I want to increase my endurance, both for riding and for running, and like to save time and not spend a lot of time uh, riding my bike. I'd say I'll uh, increase my running distance. So I increased it to about 10 kilometers which for me is one hour uh, of running and uh, that kind of saves me time, but uh, also probably not the best idea. Usually when I uh, increase my uh, running distance, I do it a lot more incrementally. I start from uh, five kilometers, seven kilometers and slowly uh, build up my strength till I go for uh, greater distances. I'd say it was when I started running, it was a bit misleading because in terms of cardio fitness, I felt good, like the runs weren't overwhelming in terms of my cardio fitness. But I guess in hindsight, in terms of impact and allowing my body time to conditioning to this uh, new, new regime, uh, it was a bit too, too much too fast. Um, the third thing I think I did wrong, and by the way, this uh, this isn't me, it's just a free image uh, for, from the internet. Uh, I stopped my uh, Pilates training. Um, so usually I do like uh, Pilates on, uh, on mat, and I find it helps me a lot to recover for rides and also work and stretch uh, muscles that I usually don't get to work on when I'm focused on riding my bike. Uh, on top of that, I even have at home a um, uh, Pilates performer, so this kind of uh, Pilates bed, which also is great uh, work uh, exercise, and my, my wife is even a certified trainer. And while in the past I did use, use her help to, to train myself, um, in the months before my injury, uh, I stopped doing uh, Pilates. Like I said, I was uh, really focused on increasing my endurance, and I kind of let let these other size side activities. I I kind of neglected them. 
So one of the things I, I thought that would help was like dropping the single speed. It seemed like the, the most uh, obvious uh, reason, uh, like the, the mashing of the pedals, putting a lot of uh, stress. So I put, I put back on my gears on my bike. I actually also swapped back to the, from the Cantrell Nimble 9. I swapped back to the Ragley Big Al. I also thought it might be something uh, related to geometry. And at least in terms of the gears themselves, it wasn't such a great idea. I think like one of the reasons I wanted to do this is uh, um, we signed up at work for this uh, mountain bike uh, rally race and I really didn't want to uh, stop my participation. Uh, actually, this rally race is the whole reason I, I was focused on building my endurance. I wanted uh, to have a, to have a good, good time and not be very, um, very fatigued from this relay race. And uh, so after I got the overuse injury in my, uh, it's in my left knee, by the way, um, I thought, okay, I can still participate if I put gears on my bike. And I think this also wasn't a great idea. So I think if I s would have simply stayed with a single speed, I think I would probably, probably would have avoided this, uh, this race, which might be a much better idea, at least for me in my condition. Um, I couldn't complete the, the race, like after my, uh, the, the relay race has two sections. So after the first section, I started f uh, feeling discomfort in my left uh, knee and I decided uh, not to continue. I think if I would have kept the single speed, I might have avoided this altogether. Uh, so ju that's just another uh, thought. Uh, the last thing in terms uh, of what I didn't do uh, so well is um, flip-flops uh, don't don't really go well with my knees. So uh, as it gets hotter over here, I tend to wear uh, flip-flops and sandals more often. And I've already known actually in the past that this doesn't have good effect on my on my knees. So I have uh, orthopedic uh, insoles, and I also have actually a, I'm not sure how do you call it like a height wedge on my uh, left side because uh, there's a slight uh, discrepancies in my hips that uh, originates actually from um, congenital scoliosis that I have in my back. So my back, uh, my spine leans on one side, which in turn uh, shifts the, my uh, hips. And so this kind of causes one of my, my right foot to be a bit more lower and my uh, left foot to be a bit higher. And so I fix this with, with this wedge and also this uh, orthopedic that provides arch support. So when I wear my sandals or my flip-flops, I don't have these. And this is something I'm known to be uh, not good for, for my knees or for my feet. So I think that the main tips, and I give them also to myself as self reminders, these are kind of things that I already knew, but uh, under the circumstances, I decided to ignore these. So I think the, the first thing is to ease into new gear, into new regime. So even minor changes like swapping the gear ratio or swapping a different shoes uh, to a different shoes, you need to let your body uh, ease into this. Uh, like I said earlier, ease into uh, running greater distances. The, the body uh, is an amazing uh, machine, but you have to give it time to adapt. And if you don't give it time to adapt, you end up like, like I'm in this situation now. Uh, the second thing I think is about listening to my body. So uh, the, my knee started feeling discomfort a lot before it came like uh, unbearable. So uh, even in my last uh, off-road ride, which, which was uh, two months ago, I came to the point where in the mid-ride, it was becoming more and more uh, of a discomfort. And it came to the point that it was actually unbearable. And instead of just stopping there and finishing my ride for today, I decided to like uh, crunch through the pain and uh, which was obviously a, a really bad call. Like I wasn't in the middle of a race or anything. I was just riding alone in the weekend. And I don't know, for some reason I didn't stop. I didn't uh, try to shorten my ride. I just kept on going wrong, uh, going on, which was a, a very bad idea. So just to summarize this up, I think, I think this all boils down to this kind of multiplier effect of lots of uh, little things that by themselves, each one may haven't been so bad, but like 
uh, if if this is pool, this is a pool, and each thing I did wrong is kind of a rock that you throw into the pool, and one throw one rock won't make such a big of a deal, but then you throw like lots of them, and uh, everything becomes unstable. And I think that's one one of the things I, I see that I did really wrong. So maybe if I've just swapped my gear ratios, it wouldn't have been as bad. But adding on to that. Uh, running further distances, riding with a seat post that was clearly not uh, rideable, and uh, all these things add up to uh, a very bad place where I'm now unable to ride. And I'm still, so in terms of mitigation, I'm waiting for starting uh, physiotherapy. I'm also waiting in order to receive a, a proper diagnosis. So at the moment, as far as I have read, it sounds like what I have is a runner's knee or jumper's knees, uh, and uh, I hope it will be resolved easily. Um, so until I start the physiotherapy, I'm taking uh, no no uh, bike rides for now, especially off road. I might still do very short, uh, like five to ten minutes uh, pavement rides under my house just to uh, get a little bit of movement into my knee, into my uh, ling mats. Uh, so that's all. And I'm also going, obviously I have, uh, I don't have a lot of um, possibilities of other sports, like I won't run also at the moment. So I'm trying to invest more time in Pilates, uh, perhaps also uh, take up swimming. So uh, that's all. I hope some of you may have benefit benefited from uh, this info. This is kind of, like it's a bit, uh, there's the physical aspect and there's also the mental aspect of uh, being injured and being unable to ride. Uh, and uh, I think part of, part of it is the reason that I haven't uploaded a new video for a long time. Uh, so that's it, that's my thoughts. And uh, just another important uh, disclaimer that I should have added at the start and I forgot. Of course, none of this is, uh, is medical advice. This is just me uh, sharing my experience and my insights from the from the process. And like I said, it's mainly uh, mainly a self reminder for myself. And uh, hopefully, I won't be in the situation uh, again.